May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, let's not overthink it. I wonder sometimes if we have ever made a decision that later we regretted making. Yes? Well, I am sure that we all have at some time or another, no doubt about it. Now, the story of Job, in my opinion, is just such an event for God. You see, Satan back then was one of the angels of the Lord, and he has patrolled the earth and come back into God's presence. God asked Satan where he has been and had he noticed his servant Job. And had he also noticed that Job would have nothing to do with evil. Now, let's just stop right here and think about it. God was bragging about his servant Job and how wonderful he was. And that was God's first mistake. That bragging got Satan all riled up for a challenge. Oh, of course Job is so good because you have given him everything and more of what he needs. He is rich and popular. Why wouldn't he be your faithful servant? I'll bet that if he didn't have all those riches, he would curse you right to your face. The trap is set and God plays the game. That was the Lord's worst mistake. God says, you can do anything to Job and his wealth, but don't harm him physically. Let the regrets begin. Of course, we all know the story of Job and how even though he suffered immensely with the loss of his wealth, being despised by his friends, the rebuke of his family and the sores all over his body, he will not curse God. Satan is dancing with delight, and God watches woefully, I am sure, as his servant suffers. And I know God is thinking, why did I ever agree to play this game? Today's reading is the end of the story when Job is restored to his former self with even more. He has given back his health, he has given back his status and pride. He has been given back all of his wealth, twice as much as he had before. And he lives to be 140 years old. God had a lot to make up for that regretful decision to play a game with Satan. Who won? Well, you tell me. Well, I think that Satan won right at the very start when God agreed to play the game. Sometimes it's better not to play at all than to play and suffer the consequences, whatever that game might be. Believe me, God would never do that again. Now here's a game that I think we play a lot more than we should. It's called, What Possible Worst Case Scenario Can We Come Up With for our lives. Just think about it. It might be something in the relationships with our family. It might be something related to our workplace. It might be something related to our health. Whatever it is, we can jump from the first stage right to the end when everything will be a disaster, right? We obsess with the worst case scenario as if it will be the final outcome. That normally isn't the case anyway. So why do we let our minds take us to that place of doom and gloom? Please, I beg of you, don't rehearse for bad news. Just don't play that game. There is enough bad news for us right now, today. So let's not go to the place of imagining bad news for the future as well. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. That's the expression. So let us stay focused on the present moment and work through that 
to the best of our ability and let us look for a beneficial outcome, not a disastrous one. Sound good? Okay. Now, if we look at the healing of Bartimaeus' story in the gospel today, we can learn a few things. First, the blind man speaks out when he hears that Jesus is nearby. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he calls twice. So he is persistent in his call to the Lord. He doesn't give up. He continues to call upon his Lord for favor and blessing. And we should do that too. Bartimaeus gets his wish. Jesus calls him to come close. Even the disciples know something is going to happen because they tell Bartimaeus to take heart for the master is calling you. The next encounter is crucial to understanding our own encounters with God through prayer or any other way that we call out to God. Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? Bartimaeus responds, my teacher, let me see again. A direct question and a direct answer. Perfect. Clarity can save us. Clarity in the moment can save us from further harming ourselves. It is in worrying about the outcome of our dilemma or imagining the worst case scenario that it's our greatest downfall. Being clear and concise with what we want at least identifies with clarity what our heart's desire might be. And God can work with that. I can work with that. Others can work with that too because we can see exactly what is being asked of us whenever someone comes to us for a blessing or a favor, right? We can see the truth of our situation and you know what they say, the truth will set us free. When we can see the truth and the clarity of our dilemma, then there will also be insight to see more options to solve that dilemma. Well, my brothers and sisters, in the times of my life, when it seems like everything is happening quickly, and then, for sure, in my mind, everything is racing at light speed to the possibilities of an outcome that just might be disastrous, I try to slow myself down in quiet prayer and meditation, just so I can put things into perspective. I try not to sabotage myself with negative thinking. It's hard to do, but it gets easier with practice. Meditation is simple. Just breathe in the good or the positive and breathe out the bad or the negative. Breathe slowly and with intention, acknowledging how your body will begin to relax as well. Breathe this way for five to ten minutes, longer if you can. Then think clearly positive responses to your need and thank God for giving you the clarity to see in that moment and then go and make it happen. And if sadly someone in your life is dying, then go and be present with that loved one and that will be the answer to your most intimate prayer. Remember that our loving God is with us in the good times and in the bad. But the main thing is, God is with us. Amen? Amen.